And on our first big story, we probe into the already highly controversial decision that is taking Nigeria by storm. So if you missed it, on Wednesday, May 29th, President Bola Tinubu signed into law a bill to reintroduce the national anthem, which is Nigeria, we hail thee. It was last sung almost five decades ago. Now, this decision has sparked a wave of debate and raised questions about the priorities of the Nigerian government. The process was swift, by the way. The lower house of parliament began um, debating the change last week and approved it the same day. The upper house followed suit on Tuesday and President Tunubu, marking his first year in office, signed the bill into law just hours later. Now, the rapidity of this legislative process has raised eyebrows, particularly given Nigeria's current economic challenges. Analysts have noted the unusual speed, especially considering both houses of parliament are dominated by members of the ruling All Progressives Congress. The anthem, Nigeria We Hail Thee, was originally introduced in 1960 as Nigeria gained independence from British colonial rule. It was penned by two British women living in Nigeria at the time, which later sparked criticism for not being authored by Nigerians. In 1978, however, amid efforts to foster unity after the Civil War, it was replaced by Arise, O Come Patriots, a poem composed by five Nigerians, P.O. Adiribibe, John A. Ilechuku, Sotsa Omuigui, M. Etim Akban, and B.A. Ogunaike, and set to music by Ben Odiase, a police officer. The anthem, which emphasized theme of national service, the sacrifice of past heroes, and a collective commitment to building a just and peaceful future, served the nation for nearly five decades. Mm, and that's a very long time. And so the reintroduction of the old anthem has deepened divided opinion. Some see it as a nostalgic return to Nigeria's roots, while others criticize it as a distraction from the pressing issues facing the nation today, such as the severe cost of leaving crisis. And so to that effect, we're going to be discussing this at length. And to discuss these issues are uh, we have with us Joining us via video chat, Adiola Cherton. He is the coordinator at the Citizenship Civic uh, Center. Morning, sir. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning. Happy to be here. Welcome thank to the program. Uh, let's get started very, very quickly as we get started. Let's start by, you know, your thoughts on the government's decision to reintroduce the old national anthem. Do you see this as a priority given Nigeria's current challenges? Let me commend your station because I watched the Vox Pop you did for the men and women of the street. Uh, it's very commendable. Of course, the conscientious traditional activists are becoming to sound like a broken record. Yeah, which I think uh, is not very correct. Uh, let's talk to people too, the farmers, traders, and water, so that it doesn't pass outside the government. So please, I commend you once again. Well, mm -hmm. we all know it's a pure diversion, total, total diversion, which has no meaning to our circumstances. Uh, well, our people use that uh, no matter the sweetness of a lullaby, a place or substitute for food and drug uh, to an crying baby, no matter whatever you want to bring, uh, if your child is uh, sickly, no matter the amount of songs, a lot for her, you are just wasting your time. You must first of all address you know, the cause of the crying. So what you know, I just done is to serve us a lullaby while we are crying against the uh, cost of living, unemployment, high cost of education, high bills of electricity, and high in of uh, petroleum. And what that means is that the 
but player if it is so crushing, so crushing. Uh, today, we all know the prices of uh, rice, flour, gari, you know, just ordinary gari. I wrote something two days ago, and my wife corrected me that uh, I said it was 29,000 in my piece about uh, three or four days or two days ago. So today, we are living in a nation. Inflation, devaluation due to introduction of anti people, anti working class, neoliberal structural adjustment program that has heightened, you know, the danger. Yes. And I think any serious government should not even be bothering whether I want to sing new songs, I want to revert back to old songs. You should be thinking that I admit mistake by announcing oil subsidy is gone on the first day of my inauguration without even stepping to the office, without a cabinet. So he should be thinking of how he's going to correct that mistake, a very big mistake that has caused us an adverse multiplier effect. President Tinobu knew quite right that Nigeria has He mentioned it in his campaign. Prices of fuel, of food, and what are you by his, uh, by his uh, popular only? Today it's an opposite. So I don't want, I wonder why a president just wants to distort or distract. To that end, Mr. Shoeta, uh, we, we have a question for you to that end, Mr. Shoeta. Um, I'm hoping that you would also use this time to perhaps maybe adjust your audio because we. we uh, having problems hearing you. But let me ask, now Nigeria is not the only country that has in recent times, maybe in far recent times, changed their anthem. Rwanda changed its anthem not too far back ago from Rwanda and Ziza to Rwanda Raku. Um, Libya changed theirs from Libya, Libya, Libya to Allah Akbar. Nigeria is changing theirs from uh, Arise, O Come Patriots, to Nigeria, we hail thee. Why is such a small piece of national heritage such a big deal why was it why is it something that a government has to look at and say oh we have to change it how does it affect the people how does this decision impact um nationhood national unity how does it impact the identity of the common nigerian well the first thing is any national anthem should be a product of people's aspiration at an appropriate time People's aspiration, goal, achievement, and of course a call to duty. But if it's not back up with a leadership commitment to those wordings in the national anthem, it's a joke. It's just like a sweet nonsense that uh, an, uh, an insincere man talks to a woman, you know, on the bed because he wants to get glasses. So it's a question of time. You talk of Rwanda. We all knew how Rwanda and what Rwanda has done, what they have been able to do, and how they have been able, you know, to achieve some landmark, you know, things in their life. So if they are changing their their national anthem, then you can say, okay, that is timely. What is timely here? What is timely here? Where you know the next price of food and services and product that is coming to you. And you know what? This past shows that place which I refer to now as a hollow chamber is a place of poverty. And you know, when Nigerian president, even before now, wants to pass uh, such their own bill, using the National Assembly as a cover, you will see the speed of light that they will do. Wage debate is still on. Labor is calling for strike on uh, Monday, which to me is long overdue. You are not that. Yeah, you are not telling us the minimum wage that is convenient to Nigerian people. And I've mentioned that look, minimum wage cannot be agreed on 
thing uh, if I recall, uh, if I pastor, it has to be based on concrete things, cost of living in this. And you are here, you know. Mr. Shoreton, I'm glad that you are just reeling out all the conditions or all the, you know, situations that the average Nigerian is facing, you know. And many of the analysts have said that uh, the reintroduction of the old anthem, which is uh, Nigeria we hail the, might just be, you know, a ploy to divert attention to these issues that Nigerians are facing. Do you agree to those <laughs> sentiments? Or, I mean, could this be another political motivation behind this? I can't. I can't agree to such uh, funny, funny reasoning, such logic. And I'll tell you why. Even look at uh, the national anthem, the new old national anthem, if I may call it so. Uh, they said, uh, uh, though tribes and tongues may differ, in brotherhood we stand. That's a lie. The elections in Nigeria, including the just concluded 2023 election, has put a lie to such, you know, uh, sentence. Every time election comes up, political rules and their supporters crawl back to their ethnic and religious token, fight violently, kill, name and make Nigeria to be terribly, you know, uh, living in terms of uh, electoral justice and democracy. You go and revert the light on yourself when you have not done concrete things to make Nigeria. And uh, uh, in aspiration, we all know it's a lie. So if you are coming with such a lie, when people are clamoring for basic things of life, then we know they are not serious there. There's no thinking. There's no serious thinking going on in that place. If your child is crying, is hungry, think for him, you don't. You first of all ask. After he has eaten, that you can start singing any song you want to sing. And I also look at the, the immediate old uh, national hunt. Of course, uh, I'm happy that you even repeated it, okay. that it was composed by Nigerians. Okay, so Mr. Shoa, the, the I'm yes. sorry to keep cutting you, but there's, there's a lot we actually want to milk out of you this morning. And one of it is this. Let's take a comparison. Let's take a look at the last time that this almost became a thing. President, former President Goodluck Jonathan, during his time, actually commenced the process to change the national anthem back to the new old one that we're talking about currently. That didn't happen then. Do you see any difference between what happened then, why it didn't happen then, and perhaps compared to now when it had a swift response from the House? What do you think might be responsible? Are there any takeaways from these comparisons? Aida, Obasanjo, Jonathan, Tinubu, uh, changed the thing. It makes it nonsensical. It doesn't matter who changed it. Because you have to address concretely what are the people's problem? National anthem is just like uh, Fuji or Juju or Afrobeat, you know, in the in the eyes, in the ears of the people. If you are not doing good governance, so what the hell? Whether you have uh, a national anthem that uh, that is danceable or not danceable, that is not our business. I bought uh, Ogufe, you know, which we used to buy for one five three days ago. You know, so how do you go? Amala, 20 naira, is just one boat. Talk of uh, rice, what to talk of garlic. These are the concrete thing. It shows our leaders are not with us. They are not even living with us. Because I cannot imagine myself now thinking, when I have a lot of responsibility, I'm, I'm striving not to meet. So this is the thing. So don't let us be diverted by this, the unnecessary, you know, attention to inanities. And when you start having inanities as an issue, then it shows how the relevant government is to our life. We are talking. 
you are talking of uh, one uh, national anthem changes. You know, it's, it's to me, it's meaningless. It's, it's unreasonable. You know, it's unreasonable. You know, so it's not a question of, uh, by the way, if people are, some people are saying that, you know, who is courageous by adopting that, uh, even the most relevant, you know, the cover. We are talking of restructuring, you know, we are talking of uh, 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 national income distribution, we are talking of resource control. These are basic things. You don't look at one fake uh, to divert people. You have to, and Tinubu and his uh, team have All right, been. Sir. Well, well, Mr. So Mr. Adela Shueta, we have to round off here for the sake that we have to take the news at the top of the hour. But we want to say thank you very much for joining us and giving us your opinion I on the matter. Here. Thank you I very much. Your station for, I commend your station again for talking to the masses. Please thank continue. Like. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, thank sir. Thank you very much, sir.